Hello everyone. I think we're going to do a couple of VRs today. Um, I just seem to be in that groove today. So let's get started. Um, this one was um, I saw on uh, Ethany's channel. And uh, she did a VR uh, to Lady Knight of Avalon. How do you tarot? Hashtag, how do you tarot? And I really loved Anthony's take on it. And I was like, I think I want to do that. So uh, there's 10 questions. And I'll do my best to, um, to answer them. And we'll begin with number one. Uh, what do you like about tarot? Um, I like that uh, I, I've, I've, for the longest time, um, it would be like something, um, I don't know how to describe it. Something would tell me something. It would be like an inner voice or inner knowing. And um, I now know it to be intuition or uh, sometimes I'll refer to it as spirit. Uh, spirit has told me so and so. Um, so I like that the tarot cards picks up on those energies and broadens my intuition and kind of like um, inflames it uh, uh, to to open up more um, and to be even more intuitive. Uh, if that makes sense. Um, number two, what do you use it for? Well, I guess I just kind of um, I've answered that. I use it to read uh, to read energies um, to uh, get a snapshot, so to speak, of this day or this moment in time number three what is your current workhorse deck uh, that you can read no matter what or well, this is a no-brainer if you've watched any of my um, last few VRs that ask something along this line then you know that my workhorse is this might hurt from Isabella Rotman. And this deck just just speaks to me. Um, I mean, it just it speaks to me. It's easy for me to read no matter what. Um, I was put off. Uh, by this deck to begin with. I don't know. It was something about the name and um, the image on the box of the, I, I forget what he's called, but I call it the snake biting his own tail. That bothered me somewhat. Um, I'm not a fan of snakes. Um, but I've been doing some work on that and got to where that image wasn't as repulsive to me. And I guess that's even more visual on the backs of the cards where you see the, 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 the two snakes and they're tied together in the middle. And sometimes it creeps me out a little. But this is still um, my workhorse deck. This is... Uh, this is my go-to. Um, very easy for me to read and to work with. Okay. Um, number four. What is your personally most difficult deck to work with and why? Okay, I think this was addressed in another video as well, and I apologize for the repeats, but there's going to be some other questions here that will delve into other areas. Um, this is going to be uh, the Greenwood Tarot, 
and uh, the Greenwood is a deck that's out of print now, but that the images have been released by the artist uh, Jessica Potter. And uh, the deck is by Mark Ryan and Jessica Potter. And she released the images uh, so you can make your own decks. And uh, I created this one on Make Playing Cards and was so excited that uh, I was going to be able to get such a beautiful deck that was now out of print. And I get the deck and I start working with it and some of the images didn't line up um, as easily uh, with RWS as other decks that I have. I seem to uh, have a tendency to be drawn to RWS clones. And uh, this didn't align that easily with the RWS, so I struggle with it. And um, this will be a deck that I will definitely um, have to put some work into um, if I'm going to um, if I'm going to to understand it and uh, to get more fluent with it. Okay, which deck do you want to study in depth, but haven't gotten around to it yet? Um, that would be Pocket of Peers by Jamie Sawyer. And the reason I want to study this deck is, um, one, it's from more of a first-person perspective. Those seem to be real popular decks right now. Uh, but it's from that perspective but more than that, I want to know, uh, she used people from the uh, tarot community uh, as her major arcanas. And even on, on the minor cards, uh, she used people from the uh, tarot community, like this card, I think, is her mother. Um, but uh, you may recognize some of these that I don't yet know. And I, th that's what has me uh, interested. I want to study this deck to find out uh, who these uh, people are, why she chose to put them on the cards that she put them on, and uh, to learn more uh, about the cards themselves and about the community that... Uh, I'm becoming a part of. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, the deck that, uh, now I do know this one's Chris Ann. Um, but I do um, want to delve deeper into this and to study this um, a little more. Um, so... So, yes, I want to work with that one. Okay. And I guess you would also include the green wood in that. I want to get deeper into it as well. Uh, number six, what is your preferred deck style? And has it changed over time? Um, my deck style, I guess, would be RWS, and I do like now uh, what has changed over time. In the beginning, I wanted to stay very strict to the original RWS um, images, uh, but um, the longer that I've been here, I'm drawn more to the modern interpretations of that. But I still rely strongly on that base foundation and framework that I am drawn to clones like um, This Might Hurt or Fifth Spirit or 
um, some of Ethany's decks, um, Unfolding Path by um, um, Athene uh, Arcana. These decks that are more diverse, more inclusive, um, with a modern take, but a um, clear representation of the RWS system. Um, that's the only system I know thus far. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's um, my preferred deck style. Number eight. When you read for yourself... No. Number seven. What is a question you'd never ask the tarot? One regarding death. Uh, I'm not going to ask Tarot, is somebody going to die, or, you know, when are they going to die? I, um, no. And um, I have a family member who is, um, has some major health issues right now. And um, the thought has crossed my mind a couple of times uh, to uh, to do a reading um, regarding her uh, but I'm like you know there's some things that um, there's some things that you just can't uh, rely on uh, from tarot um, I believe tarot will give me the energy of the situation, but I don't know um, that it can give me any conclusive day that or, or time frame that someone's going to die. And another thing, the, the one that plucks my nerve the most is, is he going to come back or, um, you know, that's going to be uh, contingent on your relationship with that individual. It's not going to be on what the energy of the card says. Um, number eight, when you read for yourself, what do you look for? What kind of questions do you ask? Basically, I ask for, e even for myself or when I'm doing daily collectives, I ask Spirit to uh, show me what I need to know today and what are the energies for today. And I keep it um, pretty much in the here and the now. Um, I don't delve into... Um, next week, next month, next year. Um, I, I, I just don't do that. Um, I look for, um, there will be images that will spark my intuition. Um, and, uh, I look for those, um, and for those messages from spirit. Number nine, after all the things that you've learned about the tarot so far, is there something else about tarot that you want to study, research, or learn? Um, I know there are two other major uh, systems. There's the Marseille, and there is the, the thought. And... Um, I don't have a problem with PIP decks, so the Marseille system, uh, even though right now uh, it looks, um, I don't know that I could understand it right now. That's something I would have to work with. But I probably, and then there are those who says that Marseille was the first original tarot. So I guess in some ways um, I would 
probably want to learn more about Marseille. Uh, yeah. Number 10. What advice would you give someone who's just starting to learn? Um, I watched a lot of videos uh, for beginners. Um, Lisa Papez has um, her training wheels videos. I done those. I looked at uh, videos from um, Daily Tarot Girl, uh, her beginner series, uh, her deep dives into um, the different cards and the decks. Um, I just, uh, I got books and I read uh, and tried to learn what I could. When I get decks, I tend to lean more towards decks that has a good guidebook with it so I can get a different take, a different perspective uh, to add to and to broaden my knowledge. Um, I would say don't be in a hurry. Uh, in some ways, uh, I started my channel, I think probably before I was prepared, really prepared to. Um, but um, do I regret it? No, not really. Uh, but I do wish I'd have given myself a little more time. Um, I would say don't be in such a rush and so much of a hurry um, to educate yourself, to give yourself time. And, um, you know, w once you've got a little bit of um, a foundation under you, then, yeah, jump right in and... There is room um, for everybody in the uh, tarot community. And um, so, yeah, those are uh, my answers uh, to the How Do You Tarot. And uh, I'd like to thank Lady Knight of Avalon uh, for the hashtag. And I definitely would like to thank Ethany um, for um, her VR. And so um, comment down below if you're interested in doing a VR on this hashtag. Uh, if you've already done one, uh, drop me a link down below. I'd love to go see your answers. Um, if you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you. Uh, if you haven't, um, please subscribe. If you like my videos and my content, then give me a thumbs up. Uh, that seems to be pretty important to YouTube to raise me in the algorithm. Comment down below. Let me know what you like, what resonated. Um, give me suggestions for the content you'd like to see me create. Give me feedback on what I could have done differently or better in this video. Uh, all of these things will help me to grow, and I'm grateful for all your support and everything you do to help me to grow. So there will be links uh, to both of those videos uh, down in the comments below, and do go see these ladies and give them some love. And you will be seeing me again soon uh, in another uh, hashtag VR, uh, an unboxing or possibly one of my daily collectives. So see you soon. Bye.